I tried to, I tried to leave you alone, but you just keep running off at the mouth. Like you still in your feeling? Cause I won't rock with you, dog. Beat it, beat it. Get up off my Johnson, man. Stop acting like a female. Get you some business, clown. But because it seemed like you just don't want to go away, I'ma make you go away. I'ma make you go away. You act like an obsessed mutt, an obsessed mutt. Now, I ain't said nothing to you because I don't give a damn about you. You're keeping it real. But every time I look around, you always got something to say that people telling me that you saying. Even though I had to tell some of them people like, look, stop telling me what this clown saying because I don't care. I don't care. I'm doing me like I always done. He's a battle truth reject, a copycat, a flunky. Now, already broke you down bad enough that it's going to stick with you forever. And this is what they're going to forever call you. Vladimir Hachman. <laughs> Vladimir Hachman Hussein. With that being said, that's going to stay with you forever. And everything else I broke you down and exposed you on. I told you, dude, you don't want it with me. You don't stand the chance. You don't even come near. You, you know what? That's what bring me to this. Even your guy told you this. Let's look at what this guy said, man. Let's look at what this guy said to him. Because this is what I want to address. I want to address what your guy said to you, who now coming out exposing him and come to find out, I guess you wanted some type of help from him. <laughs> These dudes right here, man. Terrible. So listen at this, y'all. Listen at what his guy told him. This dude named Battle Rap Mir. He's trying to reach out to me because Battle Troop is whipping his ass. And he tried to reach out to get a hand. No, no, this is a one on one fight. You better win. And might I add, Battle Troop is one of the blogger war kings. You better bob and weave out there. That's all I got to tell you. Bob and weave because I'm not helping you with this. We're not jumping Battle Troop. That's what I wanted to do from the beginning. Now you got to ride solo and get your ass whipped because you can't handle Battle Troop and no blogger war. You kidding me? So then he puts my music in his, his kill shot. His, his, his kill shot, which really wasn't even a kill shot. I'm not even going to get into it. He puts my music into his kill shot to help him elevate his kill shot. And like, I didn't really appreciate it. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because where was that energy at when I was making it? Where was that energy at? You need to fight this man one-on-one. -on -one. That's what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? So, right there right there says a whole lot so god letting you know but see that's why you in this situation right now you had niggas gassing you up really feeling yourself because you were starting to grow in this community and say now is my time to backstab him in the back like a lot of you clowns do who want to be bloggers and want to be important because you ain't got no real friends in your life. And if you don't cut on this internet, you don't even exist. So you tried to use that to try to come at me. Young guys and them now coming out, letting it be known. Who don't know that? Did you not hear what your man just said? Huh? Did you not hear what he... I'm the blog and war king. You know why? Because y'all can't measure up to real stuff. Salute people, it is Adept 
HNIC Battle Rap and Investing. All right, man. So as y'all know, my main channel is suspended for two weeks because of medical misinformation, okay, which is bullshit because, you know, that's what happens when you're actually speaking the truth on YouTube, right? This clown that you see on the screen has not made any video regarding the jab at all. He's a fucking bitch. He's a coward and he's an agent. That's what I'm starting to seem like to me now. Because why won't you talk about the jab? URL is now putting it out there that they may mandate attendees of Summer Madness 11 to get the jab. Because they're working with Live Nation who have those requirements for live events. You haven't made one video about that. You're a fucking bitch, nigga. But whatever. Now that I'm gone, in my absence of my main channel, right? These clowns have all just started making a whole bunch of videos about me knowing that I can't respond to my main channel. They don't know my people are going to find me wherever I go. That's just what it is. And all you're doing is now helping me to promote my this second channel, Adept HNIC News, nigga. So that's fine. So we could respond to y'all. The main angle that they're using now is the fact that I told y'all that I worked at Victoria's Secret at 18 years old. I was working around a bunch of beautiful women at 18 years old. I was being paid to talk to women at 18 years old. But look at the clown that's, that's trying to make a joke of that. What were you doing at 18 years old, Battle Truth? Then I said... I remember when I was 18 years old and I was in prison. I had a homosexual cell. And then a thought came in my head like, you should get your thing sucked. And I immediately shut that thought down. Why was that thought in your head in the first place, nigga? So at 18 years old, I was working around women, being paid to speak to women. I was flirting as well because that's what helps you drive up sales as well. What's crazy is my story even told me to do that. So I was getting paid to flirt with women. And at 18 years old, you were fantasizing about having sex with your cellmate. Anybody could look at you niggas and tell you fake and weak. Which reminds me. Let's go to this. Your guy has something else he wanted to say about you. Who you used to talk to. See what else he had to say about this clown. Like I've been, watch this. Listen at this. Listen at this part. Get in line with y'all. He's a weirdo. Straight up and down weirdo. On top of the fact this man used to work at Victoria's Secrets. Now I'm not hating on no man from, for working a job. Salute to anybody working a job. Get your money, keep grinding. But I need y'all to hear this, and I don't need y'all to be biased with this. Really hear what I'm about to say. What real man can walk into a Victoria's Secret with an application and them actually take them, him seriously enough to hire him? What, what, what kind of man can do that? Really? Victoria's Secrets. Victoria's Secrets. But you all on here, you all on here talking about pansexuals and homosexuals. And you putting your application to go work at Victoria's Secrets. Place for women, but they hired you. Why did they hire you? And why did you put in that application? You claim to be so smart. You think you know it all. You battle rap investment that you teach and educate people. Let me tell y'all exactly why he put in that application to work at Victoria's Secrets and why as a man he was hired. Not only as a man he was hired and why um, he actually did it. I'm going to tell you what's real. Because he knew that if he put the application in, seeing that there is a heavy, strong emerging of homosexuality, transgendering, cross-dressing, he had the possibility of being hired. So they hired him so that he 
could assist with transgenders, cross-dressers, homosexual guys who come into Victoria's Secrets for their sexual perversion to assist them in the choosing and picking up and attires and bath works and toys. This clown who calling everybody pansexuals. This clown who trying to make it seem as though he against it, but in reality, undercover, he with it. He like Roman sex. You know what Romans used to do? He like Roman sex. He like women and men sex. He like being with a woman and receiving it from the back. He's a receiver. Not like a radio stereo system, but a receiver as a socket. He's the plug. He get plugged. He get, he get plugged. He like to get punctured. That's why he like Asian men who specialize in acupunctures. He want to get punctured. He like to be dominated. He like his anal gland ruptured. That's the stuff he do. That's why he have this crazy obsession with men because he like punishment. He like Roman sex. So he try to pick stuff with strong, gangster, tough guys so they can seek him out, bust him upside the head, and he hopes to get his anal gland ruptured. Are you serious? Are you serious? So I'm being clowned for working around women at 18 years old. But at 18 years old, you were you had the thought in your mind of having sex with a man. Are you serious? Nigga. Matter of fact, give me one second. Let's pause this for a second. As I told you, my cellmate had went to the hole. I go to visiting room one day. I come back and... When you come back, you go to the control booth and you say, hey, Williams returning from visit. They always want to know where you're at, where you're coming from. Pop my cell. Well, I look over at my cell door and my door's already open. So I'm going to tell them to open the door and I'm like, why is my door open? I start walking in that direction and my homeboy comes running up to me. He's like, JJ, chill out real quick, man. Let me holler at you. And I'm like, what's, what's up, man? You know what I mean? I'm like looking at him because the way he ran up on me, he's like, man, they put the boy in your cell. I said, put, they put a what? He's like, you know, the boy with the titties? I'm like, what about him? He's like, they put him in your cell, man. He's like, these dudes down here went to the unit manager. And we had a unit manager. I think she's the assistant warden down in Carolyn Parker. And Carolyn Parker loved them gay guys. She would always have a bunch of them in her office. They would do little errands for her, like run paperwork from building to building. Like she gave these dudes a lot of power, but she and she messed with these boys. And it was a known fact, not all of them, but a lot of them were into telling on dudes. And that's why they had the power they had, because it's kind of like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. They were blatantly telling. So you knew that if you put your hands on one of them, First of all, you better not lose, because everybody's going to joke on you. You ever you forget, ever be guy, the guy that got beat up by the gay dude that's supposed to be this big, strong convict, and now you got beat up by a gay dude. Dudes are going to laugh at you. So my homeboy tells me, yeah, man, these, these dudes are here, the right guy. He got him, you know, they got him moved down here. They want him in this pod. These dudes, like, did all this stuff in here. In your cell. I saw oh, hell no. No. I was not ready for what I walked up on. I was new 100%. I was going to tell him, hey, homeboy, you can't be in my cell, man. Like, that's the politics. That's the prison politics. That's the code. Everybody knows. Everybody knows me. Everybody expects that if I'm not gay, you're not, I'm not living with a gay man in my cell. That's just a bad look. You already know what everybody thinks. Like I said, St. The Streets, this is prison. This is... It's like the unwritten rule that a gay man cannot live in a cell with a straight man. And if you allow it, you have now labeled yourself as gay. Facts. This is a dude, a white dude, 
that was in prison telling you what the fuck it is. Battle truth. Why did you allow that man to live in your cell? All you did was tell us that you had the you had the you had the fantasy of having sex with him, but at no point did you put any information out there about you getting a new cellmate, nigga. You were living with that man. Why why would also why did they choose you for that gay man to live so comfortably with? Oh yeah, because you a snitch. You probably a snitch. That's probably what it is. That's the only way they're going to put a gay man in your cell. Whether if you're gay yourself or if you're a snitch cuz both of y'all niggas is in protective custody, you bitch ass nigga. Get the fuck out of here, son. You must be fucking crazy, bro. And y'all y'all it's sad that y'all motherfuckers just sitting here hating on me. Why don't you learn from me? Instead of hating on my blog so much, why don't you actually learn something and realize the people want to tune into actual information? You have no information to give people. That's why y'all niggas' channels are dead. Straight up. Y'all niggas only see light when you talk about me. The only one I'm naming is Battle Truth. There's many bloggers out there trying to take advantage of my little two-week suspension, and y'all putting out all this bullshit about me. That's what this clown doing. So he calling people pansexuals at the same time assisting transgenders, cross-dressers, and homosexuals and putting on all type of negligees and leotards and thongs. That's what this clown doing. That's why they hired him at Victoria's Secret. That's why he put his application in. And that's exactly what he was doing. He can't say it's a lie because he know it was true. He was assisting transgenders and homosexuals in cross dresses and picking out bath and body works, toys to stroke themselves with, and all type of female exotic lingerie to dress in. At the same time, dressing in them himself. They will have him put them on some time to see how he looked at them to decide whether or not they would buy them. Where my damn guy put this sucker got y'all food, got y'all sitting up there actually believing this dude lie. He putting it all on everybody else when in reality, this nigga is a Superman transgender. You know how Superman go in the phone booth? That's what he was doing. Going in the Victoria booths and booths by them transgenders and homosexuals were dressing them up in all type of lace, all type of silk, all type of fishnet. And he coming out, and they got him walking the red, got him walking the floor like a damn supermodel, thonged up, and all type of high heels and boots. Look at him, hand on his hip. I put my hand upon my hip. When I dip, you dip, you dip. I put my hand upon my hip. When Look at him, he ready to do it now. Look at him. Smacking up. Look at him. Look at him. Damn, mutt. I, I called him a mutt. That's why he don't, he don't like to let his hair grow. He don't like to let his hair grow. Because he know if he let his hair grow, he going to look like a damn dog. He going to transform into a dog right before y'all very eyes. That's what they don't like. That's why they never like their hair to grow. Every time they be trying to pretend and fake like they black, Notice what they don't like to do. They don't like their hair to grow because they show their nationality. They like to keep it low so that they think they can fit in with us. Let it grow. Let us see you transform into a damn dog. Let us see you transform into a damn bloodhound. Let us see it. That's exactly what he gonna look like. He let his hair grow eight to six months. He gonna look like a damn. He gonna look like a damn Irish, a, a, a Irish damn bloodhound. He gonna look like one of them. He's a mutt. Talking about A D H and I C. Head nigga in charge. Nigga got two percent black in him. Talking about he the head nigga in charge. I should roast your dumb ass. 
This is why they were telling you, dog. Stay, you out of your lane. You out of your lane, dog. I will put you in check so quick. It ain't even funny. You can't do nothing better than me. Nothing. Stop trying. You sad, weak, pathetic little man. Stop trying, dog. You out of your league. They lied to you. And now they got to witness you getting your ass kicked anytime I choose like I want to give it to you. Anytime I choose, I want to give it to you. Do you see the difference? I don't care about nothing you say. I don't care about nothing you do. Because at the end of the day, you losing on every level. You do it for free. I get paid to do it. You see the difference? You such of a buster. You such of a scrub. Not only can you not get your YouTube channel monetized, but that's just evidence to show how much of a scrub and buster you is. You don't even know how to start another YouTube channel. And since you a sucker and ain't got no friends, you ain't known in the community. Nobody gives a damn about you. You ain't even. You don't even know nobody you could put it in a name. You don't even know nobody you could put it in a name for you. Because you're not loved and respected like that. You're a straight up sucker, dog. And it proves you're a weak nigga. Who you talking to? You can't say nothing about me. You can't say nothing about me. All you're going to do is lie. All you're going to do is lie. I saw your little clip you tried to do that they sent me with at the end of your video, you editing my voice to say what I really didn't say to try to make it seem like I actually said it. See, that's how much of a weak, lame nigga you is. But it don't work. Nigga, if it didn't work for everybody else, you think it's going to work for you. You think you're going to do something entirely different nobody else did. That's why I don't even have to watch you because there's nothing you're going to do that nobody else ain't already said it did. Ain't already said or did. Who lied? And everybody know you lying. You're not gonna get nobody to believe I'm a homosexual. You sound crazy. You're not gonna get nobody to believe I raped my baby mama. You're not gonna get nobody to believe that. No matter how hard you try. I don't like you fake niggas. But you the same one who said, "Yeah, I spoke to his baby mama and she told me the truth." You said you on record saying that. You on record saying that. But if you want to try to go 25 years into my path to try to think you can find something, nigga, you ain't found nothing. What do you find? What I said, what I told. Then y'all lie and twist that up. That's how fake you niggas is. Oh, your baby mama was 15 when she gave, my baby mama wasn't 15 years old when she gave birth to our son, you dumbass niggas. Y'all know that's not true. But that's what you want to say, thinking you're going to get people not to watch me. Not to watch me. Come on now. You said you talked to her. It speaks for itself. You a fake nigga, man. You weak as hell. You a weak, pathetic, fake nigga. And you continue to get exposed on it. You continue to get exposed on it. You dudes lame as hell, dog. So you sitting up here working at Victoria's Secrets, assisting transgenders and putting on lingerie, telling them they look good in it. That's what you had to say. You work there. You have to be polite. You have to be a good host and you have to do what they say. That's exactly what you were doing. You were telling them have a nice day. You were telling them they look good in it when you was helping them try on them outfits. And when they was asking you to put it on so they could see if they were buying it, they were telling you like, OK, I could buy that. That's exactly what you was doing. That's exactly what you was doing. You nasty, weak, lame, lying, perverted nigga. You a scrub. Who don't know you a scrub? You a reject. You a reject. Everything you do, you try to take from somebody. I'm going to break you down on that too. You lying nigga. And I call you a nigga, dude, because stop trying to act like you black. You a nigga. It's a difference between the black man and the nigga, and you definitely, in fact, you ain't even worthy to be neither one. You a mutt. You a mutt. And you only mad and angry and lash out because 
You've been unloved. That's why you don't know how to love. You've been unloved and rejected your whole life. And it's kind of sad and pathetic. It's kind of sad and pathetic. Little boy, get some business. Because you ain't going to do nothing to nobody. You can't fight. You're only five foot four, 115, 20 pounds, if that. And sitting up here doing all this bargaining and like you really, come on, dude, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? You don't want it with nobody you actually trying to act like you want it with. You're just as small as your computer screen. And you look pathetic in a damn white tee. Look at you. Could barely fit in the white tee. You ain't even got proper wardrobe, man. Who are you? Who are you talking to, man? Who are you talking to? You a sucker. You continue to get exposed for being a mutt, for being a weak dude. Working at Victoria's Secrets, assisting homosexuals and transgenders. Yeah, that's exactly what you was doing. Don't lie, because they come in there all the time. That's what they do. That's why you was hired, to help them. Because you were posing as one, two. Let's get real. Anytime a man put in an application to come work at Victoria's Seat, you definitely wasn't putting up inventory. The only thing you can do is assist in helping homosexuals and transgenders and cross-dressers put on women lingerie so they didn't lipstick and thong this clown up. Got him walking a red carpet and all type of female underwear and attire so that they can see if they want to buy it based upon how he looked at it. This dude is a real life transgender mannequin. Get up out of here, dog. You are lame. I will I will blow you out the water anytime I choose, man. Do you understand that? But you're so weak and lame and pathetic. Nigga, you can't even clean up your background. You dog, you filthy dog. Did you get all your shots? Did you get all, did you get your rabies shots? Huh? Did you? Did you get your polo? <laughs> What's that called? Did you get your parvo shot? Did you get that? <laughs> this dude be having fleas. <laughs> Where your damn dog collar? Where, where your damn dog collar? <laughs> Butch. Come here. Come here, boy. Sit. Sit. <laughs> Roll over. <laughs> Play dead. <laughs> Play dead. <laughs> this dude is sad, man. This dude is pathetic, man. Don't you ever, man. Don't you ever, man. You, you a lame, dog. You a lame. You losing on every level. You losing on every level. Do you even got a bedroom set like this? You got a bedroom set like this? Huh? You got a bedroom set like this? Show that Fred Sanford house you always in, that nothing ever match, nothing match or go together. Show that. Show that damn Fred Sanford house of yours where nothing match or go together. Show that. Show that. Show that weak bedroom. Show your, where your army cot. He sleep in the army cot. <laughs> That thing fold up like a damn beach chair. Where your bed that fold up like a beach chair that two people can't be on at the same time? Where your where your army cot? Where, where your damn let out couch at? Where, where your pork and bean can that transform into a hot plate? Where, where, your, where your pork and bean can you eat out that transform into a damn hot plate? Sitting up there talking about heat. Battle raps investment. <laughs> investment? Nigga, you look like everything I don't want to invest in. Any type of investing information you got to give me, oh, I'm definitely going to come up. I'm going to do the opposite. You say invest in cows, I'm investing in ponies. You say invest in corn, I'm investing in potatoes. You say invest in pennies, I'm investing in nipples. I'm doing the opposite of anything you say. 
battle rap investment, you can't even get a color on your shirt. You can't even get a color on your shirt. Get up out of here, man. Who you talking to? Can you even make a proper investment for yourself? Show some numbers of any success that you're doing investing that can give you wealth. You in New York City, you don't got a car or a bike. Where your damn bike? You ain't got the bike neither? Get your dumb ass out of here. Oh, please, you sound crazy. Get a life. Get a life. You're a battle truth reject. Stop opening your mouth trying to talk about me, and I don't care how much help you try to go get. Nobody can help you. When I put my foot in your ass, it stay there till I pull it out. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So go cry. Go pout. You obsess. He obsessed with me. This dude is obsessed with me. Watch all my stuff. Go through all my... You no different than the other clowns. You get obsessed with me, jealous and envious. You can't beat me. And then it bothers you that you got to try to come up against me because you can't beat me. And then you hope that that'll draw attention to you. But guess what? You get your ass whooped and embarrassed and shamed for the rest of your life. Do you know this going to stick with you for the rest of your life? Do you know that? Well, you know now. Well, you know now. You a sucker. You a sucker. None of that fake stuff you say equal up to this real stuff. None of it. You a straight up sucker, man. You a battle truth reject. That's all you is, man. I could do a 10-part roasting session on you, bro, anytime I choose to. This right here is damaging to you as it is. How you going to get around that? How you going to get around that dressing up transgenders and homosexuals and cross dressers? How you going to get around that? You did that. You had to do that. That was part of your job description. Say you didn't assist and help them. Say you wasn't telling them that they wasn't looking nice and all type of lingerie. You have to say that. You signed up for that, to do that. You had to know the knowledge that they would be in there because that's what they do. That's what they do. Because you dress and drag yourself. You like Roman sex. You like, you like them both. You like them both. You like them both. Go get a damn physical. Or get it down physical. You know something wrong with you anytime you could hold your anal in your hand. Something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't damage, you didn't damage your <laughs> you didn't damage your damn anal socket. <laughs> Talking about you plug. I guess so. I guess so. Pansexuals, right. He done sat in the damn pan. <laughs> he done soaked himself in the damn pan. <laughs> Go enema your damn self. <laughs> you sorry, nigga. Stop, stop trying to put my name in your mouth every time. Get you some business. Get you some business before I keep lighting you up. And you're not going to like it. Matter of fact, I got time today. I'm about to light you up again. How long is that? 26 minutes? See, I can light you up for 26 minutes straight, but I'm actually kicking real stuff. You can't get around. You definitely got some explaining to do, mister. You got some explaining to do. Why would you dressing up homosexuals and transgenders telling them they look good? Why would they slapping you on your ass, having you wear the same thing that they would have bought, bought seeing how you look good in it so that they could buy it? Why was you doing that? You see how these fake niggas is? That's what he was doing behind the scenes and got found out. He got he was doing that behind the scenes, got found out. But before he got found out and it came to the open, he come to YouTube and put on a different mask acting like something else. Like all oh, these, these homosexuals, all oh, these pansexuals, anybody who not in it, who talk to him, who not in agreement with him, who don't do, that's who homosexuals is. But like I told y'all, remember, his other obsession, he's obsessed with Cassidy, a guy who is alleged to have sex 
in a hotel with two other men he paid two thousand dollars to think about it he never addressed that he go hard on everybody else he any look thing let 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 something in the battle rap community come out against anybody to that nature that did that what cassidy was accused of remember him he don't care if it's true he don't care if it's false if any little thing come out about you whether it's proven or not he's going to use it and take it to the moon but he said nothing about that situation, brought it up, attacked or addressed Cassidy, and not at all. Let that have been any other person in battle rap. He would have used that and tore them down about it. He never used it at all against Cassidy. Wonder why. But he was trying to go out of his way, praising Cassidy, digging him up, hoping Cassidy would take knowledge of it. Do you know why? Because he knew by watching what was going on in battle rap and watching other bloggers that Cassidy was showing love to anybody that was showing him love. So he didn't want to disrespect Cassidy, even though he knew the stuff that was on Cassidy. So he swept it under the rug, ignored it and put it on other people. So y'all wouldn't uh, 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 hold him accountable to have the same energy with Cassidy because he wanted Cassidy to reach out to him. At the same time, knowing that a transgender came out against Cassidy, challenging him to a lie detector test, showing screenshots of uh, uh, their conversations and text messages, showing Cassidy body, uh, 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 knowing that he had Cassidy to the dead wrong, and he swept it under the rug because he wanted a relationship with Cassidy. Why did you want that? You hate pansexuals and homosexuals so much. Why did you want that relationship with Cassidy when you know out of everybody that ever been accused of doing that stuff, his accusation is worse. His accusation is worse than Rock's. The transgender who came out on Rock said that Rock propositioned him to want to give him head. It never happened, though. The transgender came out on Cassidy, said he paid them him and his friend, $2,000. He had two men, allegedly, $2,000 in the hotel, in the hotel doing a threesome with two other men. Nobody in battle rap allegations were as graphic and uh, uh, had more receipts than Cassidy. You knew that. Never once, never once, bought it up, attacked them on it, or anything like we do everybody else with that knowledge. But if you stand on, uh, you against homosexual and all that, and no matter what, and if no compromise media, well, what's the problem? What happened? Because you was hoping he'd take you in so you can get some too. You wanted him to pound you too. That's what you wanted. You have no other excuse for it if this is the energy and agenda that you so-called is about and represent and stand on. So what was your excuse? What was your what what was your excuse? Don't have none. You can't answer it. He never addressed it, never because he know. See, that's what see that's the difference between you and I. It's why people respect I and not you. I don't give a damn what you say. I know you ain't nothing but shock value. You a weak, pathetic little nigga with a Napoleon complex who cut on your damn camera, try to scream, holler, cuss, and say the most obnoxious, obscene thing to draw shock value to get views. But when you come to that real stuff, see, having a conversation with me won't help you at all. I will peel you like an onion. I will peel you like an onion and reveal every layer of your fakeness to you, like I'm doing right now. That's why these call kill shots. That's why you can never come back from these. And they stick with you for the rest of your life. I did this to you. Ain't nobody never did this to you like I have. Nobody. Now deal with it. And let that be a lesson to you. Stay in your place. And just so you know, clown, I ain't done with you. I ain't done with you. Didn't I tell you when I say I'm done, then I'm done. I'm not done with you. So since you want to open your mouth, now you got to live with the embarrassment 
right about now. Live with that embarrassment. Not playing yourself. Let me, do y'all want to know my secret? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell y'all my secret. Okay. I got y'all. I'm going to teach y'all how to be better, better bloggers right now. Okay. This is a death HNIC school of blogging. Okay. This is my secret. I actually have information. That's just what it is. I grabbed a stack of books. I got more books, actually. I'll probably pause this and go get more of them, but... This is why... This is why. This is why I got information, okay? John Marks, The Search for the Manchurian Candidate. It's a pretty good book. Talking about the MK Ultra experiments back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and early 70s. All right? Very good book. Very good introduction. Uh, introductionary book. All right, you could definitely uh, find more information regarding MK Ultra. These people were experimenting on American citizens, unwilling, unwilling American citizens, uh, with sex, LSD, black magic, all of these attempts in order to brainwash somebody. All right, it was all an attempt in mind control. They were doing this for decades. All right. Have a good book. The Great Deformation. All right? Talking about the history of the banks. Talking the history of, of, of American economy. Very good book. The Great Deformation. Long as a bitch, though. It's another one. Ugh. Chaos. Charles Manson, the CIA, and the secret history of the 60s. All right, very good book regarding Charles Manson, but also just in general, the topic of Project Chaos. Go look into Project Chaos. The CIA was infiltrating every single organization in the United States. That's how they infiltrated the Black Panther Party. Okay? Another good book. Ugh. This is how I even challenge my own beliefs. Okay? The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. By John Allegro. Alright, this book is about fertility cults and the origins of Judaism and Christianity, allegedly. This book has been debunked over time. Um, but it's still a very good book, though. And it's very interesting. These people believe that all Abrahamic religions come from this fertility cult. That Christ even means, like, this specific mushroom that niggas was getting high off of and stuff. Very interesting book. I don't agree with it, but it's interesting. And it's important... To challenge your own beliefs sometimes. That's how you gain information. Right? Two Babylons. Okay? By Alexander Hislop. Good book. Good book. Alexander Hislop was a son of a mason. And then he released this information regarding the secret religion that all of these people actually follow. Alright? How it all goes back to ancient Babylon. All of these false religions. Very good book. Very good book. Shit, what's another one? I, got, I, I, just grab, I grabbed a stack of books, man, from the other room. I can go grab more if y'all want. Operation Gladio. Very good book by um, Paul L. Williams. Okay? The unholy alliance between the Vatican, the CIA, and the Mafia. Very good book. Check this one out. Check this one out. Definitely... One of them that I'll put a star next to if y'all want to check out any of these books. This one's very good. Very great. Love this book. This is how I'll be killing y'all niggas in the blogging game, too. Sun Tzu. The Art of War. I'll be killing y'all motherfuckers in any kind of blog of war you will ever try to drag me into. Because I've read this. Don't be scared. It looks big, but it's really not. The actual book itself by Sun Tzu is probably it's only like maybe 20 pages long. Honestly. The rest is just talking about the history of the book and how it's being used even today, okay? Many uh, uh, top companies in the world, they require their CEOs to read this book. That's a fact. It's not a good book. The History of Money. The History of Money, okay? By Jack Weatherford, all right? This talks about the history of currency going back to when niggas was using fucking cocoa beans to trade all right 
uh, in the middle of their little uh, ceremonies, their sacrificial ceremonies to Pan. Straight up. Go look at this book. It's good, bro. I like this book. I like this book. Very dope book. This is a good introductionary book for people, too. 1666. Redemption Through Sin. All right? By Robert Seffer, uh, Sepper. This is a good book. Definitely good. Very short. Just a good uh, synopsis. Going back to Sabotage Zevi of 1666, to the Frankists, to the Bavarian Illuminati, the Rothschild family, um, the Skull and Bones organization. They talk about the Phoenicians and this shit. Fam, this, this is a really good introduction, uh, induct very good introduction type book to uh, where, these, where my channel really comes from, man. Honestly, what we really talk about on my channel. Here's an OG book. Behold the Pale Horse. You see how old this shit is? I've had this shit since I was in middle school, bro. I've had this since I was in middle school, my nigga. Come on, bro. You don't. Come on, stop. What up? Oh, I accidentally grabbed some of my other books too. Hold on. Y'all niggas ain't reading MIT books from y'all. Name one textbook that y'all have ever read from front to back, cause I can name multiple textbooks that I've read from front to back. This is one of them. Algorithm. If you're a software developer, a programmer, a coder, and you're trying to get into really understanding a lot more complex algorithms, all right, such as, all right, let's say you're in your computer programming two class, right, um, and they talk about linked list. This is a really good book that will help you understand the details of linked list, okay, and all the other kinds of stuff, all right, all these uh, data structures. Definitely very important book if you're into software development. Oh, it's another good book, man. Look, shit. Thermodynamics. I just be reading this for fun, bro. This is it. This isn't. No school requires this book. I just have it. Thermodynamics demystified. Why I believe that energy cannot be destroyed or created. It's one of the laws of thermodynamics, which is why I believe in an afterlife. All right. Have a great book, man. Oh, salute to Professor K. Fitz, man. Salute to Professor K. Fitz. I bought his book, A Primer and Combinatorics. I've read some of this, but I haven't read all this book. Um, shit, I'm going to go grab some. You know, y'all get it already, man. Y'all get it. I read. Maybe y'all should try educating yourself a little bit. And then the people will tune into you because you actually have valuable information to share. Try that. Try doing something positive. What the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas? Y'all niggas is obsessed with me. Y'all trying to... Y'all talking about pro-censorship when it comes to my channel. That shit is pathetic. You niggas is losers. If I go away, the people ain't gonna watch you. I promise you. Because I'm not even in y'all lane. Why y'all so worried about my channel? I don't do recaps. I don't do predictions. I don't do man-worship blogs. That's y'all lane. Just because people ain't tuning into that shit, y'all shouldn't be mad at me. Go do something productive. Go, go find a different lane. Because obviously the battle rap community don't care about y'all motherfuckers, man. And I'm talking about a list of bloggers right now, okay? That are all trying to attack my channel. They all teaming up like some bitch-ass Avengers. You niggas is pussy. Straight up. All right? But it is what it is, man. That's all I can tell y'all. I don't know how else I could help you guys. I don't even take advantage of like the metadata, tagging my... I don't do none of that shit. People just want to tune in. That's it. Because I have information to share. Y'all niggas have no information to share. All y'all niggas know how to do is talk about battle rap. And y'all don't even do that right. Y'all don't even do that right. But it is what it is. It is a depth HNIC battle rap and investing. Get a life. All right? Now y'all niggas is talking about, oh, well, Depth HNIC doesn't even get paid from YouTube. Okay? Because I get paid in real life. I'm not worried about this YouTube money. That's the difference between me and y'all niggas, man. I literally do this for the people. I literally do this for the people. Y'all bragging about how y'all getting the check from this. Y'all pathetic. Because y'all money ain't even long like that. At all. Y'all niggas don't have the number of subscribers to really brag about getting checks from YouTube. You niggas is cashing in $45 checks from YouTube every month. Congratulations. You're better off hustling. But it is what it is. It is adept <laughs> HNIC battle rapping investing. I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace, man.